Hi everyone, welcome back to Animal Crossing with me, Austin John Plays. I didn't play last night, ironically enough, to my name, because uh, la yesterday's video had a weird glitch from the YouTube encoder that caused it to crash at a certain time. So I was actively trying to, to fix that and get that back online with my YouTube partner. We ended up just trimming that and people have been saying that it's working now. So I'm just gonna lead it up to it was the ghost of Rodney. Good morning, Butterpup. Good morning, everyone. Right now, it's today. No breaking news. Is it just me or does this week fly by? Is this week over already? Oh, it's Friday, look at that. First of all, gold? No, but our black reproduced, so that's neat. Just a little doot doot doot. And some more doot doot doot. Let's see what's new in my world. I really do like this layout change here. I did it during a very short live stream on Twitch and, uh, came out beautiful. If I'm doing just like mindless repetitive stuff, I could stream that, but when I'm doing like creative layouts and things, it doesn't work for me. Those weren't there before. Let's take a look-see at my flowers here. Oh, looks like these boys reproduced a little bit. <laughs> my glowing spot happened in my garden. Ooh, we got some purple mums. This is working already. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We have our first purple roses! Look at that! Look at that! Our first purple roses! That's step one of nine! <laughs> so our first step is- oh, there's a lost item here, neat. Our first step is we take these purple roses and put them right between all the- oh, all these. Except that creates one weird situation because I need these to produce a white rose for me. So with that being the case, I think it's a good idea that we move this row away. But first, who does this lost item belong to? Kiki, is this yours? Oh, it's Limburg. Is Limburg home? He is not home. <laughs> uh, ooh, message in a bottle. Is it gonna be something useless again? Yep. A chic windflower wreath. Until I get lucky, I decided to give Bo a mummy outfit. Oh, it doesn't cover his face, does it? I just cannot find Limburg. Oh! Goose, you're making a trophy case. The first nice thing you've ever made that you're gonna give me a DIY for. That'd be amazing, because then I could put all my fishing trophies in there. Still haven't found Limburg. Yeah, that's baller. Three gold nuggets! Oh boy. That's the spicy meat the ball. There's only one last place that Limburg can be on my island. And that he is going to be inside of uh, my bear's house. He's wearing the Mega Charizard shirt! Limburg, I like you. You a G. You hear me? Well, it's a pouch I lost. The exact one. Thanks for bringing it all the way here. I owe ya. You're with the shirt. A wrestler uniform. <laughs> uh, okay. Do you have anything good to sell? Nope. The exact same items. I own all four of these items. What the heck, boys? Getting real frustrated. What's my turnip price? 115. We're on the up streak. Tonight begins the big payoff. Still between 132 and 190. Time for my daily pattern pickup from the Able Sisters. Isn't that right, Sanic? Ooh! It's steampunk glasses. Dr. Robotnik's favorite. So before I do my morning chores, I need to tend to my new flowers that exist in the world and move them to their proper locations. So I just downloaded this app called ACNH Life. I think it's by like a Japanese developer. Because I wanted to, uh, the documenting the Critterpedia is super easy, but the fossils, not so much so, because there's not, like, a directory, and I don't think that there's a Nook Miles achievement for donating all the fossils to the museum. Yeah, I don't even think there's one for donating all the fish. But it turns out that I have 65 of 73 fossils, so I only need 8 fossils left. I only need 20 fish of the 80. Uh, but I am a little bit behind on the bugs. I'm 47 of 80, but I know once next month hits, and especially summer, not so much next month, but when summer hits, uh, that's when we get access to all the beetles, and there are so many beetles in the game. Uh, I just did finish donating the entire Tyrannosaurus Rex to the museum, so that's neat. Most of my Mighty Morphin Power Rangers have been donated, and now it's just a matter of saving up my dupes. I've got some letters from some friends, and this just keeps beeping, so let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, from Residence, Julia sent me something. Cucumber pack. Oh, they're cucumbers for my face. A white garden lantern from Liv. Awesome. 
Was waiting since last week to send you this. The most OP TM of all time. <laughs> nice. I had no idea if you needed one of these, but now you have one. Thanks, Lucas. For the arcade. Candy. So, dude. <laughs> hey, Glitch. Something for your exercise area. This looks dope in the garden at night. Ooh. Oh, I did get the hyacinth lamp. Thank you, Jack. More garden lanterns from friends. A lot of people saw that stream at twitch.tv slash Austin John plays. I can't believe I got this DIY. It must be a sign. Zoe, is this is this the DIY we've been talking about? Oh, nice. Which is so dope. I think you could customize these. Home. Forest. Fishing spot. Resident services. Airport. Shop. Tailors. Museum. Oh, man. Arcade combat game? Oh, this one is blue. Wait, do all the arcade games say... Yeah, this is like Galaga. I really wish there was a way to turn the sound off on those. Arcade Mahjong Machine. Oh! Look at that! I said I was done with all the pinball machines and now people are sending me all the arcade machines. I don't know how many there are in total. Also, I have so many people asking me which turbo controller I use. And I honestly can't recommend the one that I use because it is not good. And see what I mean as far as like all the sounds at the same time? Yeah, that is some weird lighting mechanics. So remember how for a while I've been talking about we're gonna make some big changes? Well, it's almost about that time. It's almost time for the big changes. And it's gonna be a very long process, but oh my God, is it going to be glorious when it is? While I do love having this little town area, it's just, it needs to, I, I sort of want it to be like a hidden town. Remember when I said I want more nature? More nature just turned into there's flowers everywhere. <laughs> and I'm really upset about it. Cause like I wanted something very organic and very naturey, and now, now I have these neon palm trees everywhere. I mean, I do love the neon palm trees. I'm just saying that I need to find a good balance between having neon palm trees and man-made things and having nature things and like this little Zen garden over here. I absolutely love it, but like it's all stone around here and it just feels so, I don't know, not naturey. It feels like fake nature. Like I am in a zoo with all these animals around me. Know what I mean? So there are a lot of things that I want to do. That's gonna require a lot of work and me having a very clear idea on what I wanna do. Because like, I'm gonna need to move every single house and every single building and all these bridges and everything else. Granted, I have the money. That's not a problem. The problem is staying focused on the grand idea of things. I think one of the biggest challenges of this entire thing is I'm going to do my best to maintain my five star rating. I really do think that's going to be difficult because I'm going to take down so many pathways and fences and everything. And first thing is Paula needs to move. Kind of wanting the nooks cranny right where that is. That house is fine there. This river is going to be gone. And then we could put her house right back here. I think one of the very first steps of getting this island formatted how I want is I need to sort of envision where my path is going to go. <laughs> that's that's always how I how I do this is I envision where the path is. And then once I figure out the path, it's just so much easier. So I want I want you to walk right from the airport and then it's going to be a very dark, moody, tree filled path because right now I have like what, like nine trees behind the museum. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to get any more wasps, but that's OK, because I have plenty of wasps. I'm not going to have any good tree drops, but you know what? It's been a long time since I've had a good tree drop. It's just like the same stuff that I've been getting. Plus, I could just visit someone and catalog like an entire month's worth of tree drops, and it's only a thousand gold a day. There's no reason for me to shake these trees. Know what I mean? So I want to build a tight path from the airport to residential services. And I want residential services and back to be sort of a more formatted area. 
and I want the down here area to just be wild. I, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing with my entire flower forest area. We could condense the fruit orchard a little bit or just move the trees everywhere because you know what? I'm not collecting the fruit from these at all. I, I've been neglecting these fruit trees for so long. They're just overgrowing. I could just spread them throughout the entire village and maybe have like a small area that's more concise or something. Ah, oh, okay. And then I also want, this is going to go up to the middle of town, right? And then right down here, I'm going to have the Nook's Cranny. So I want it to be accessible from, you know, the main part of town, but I still want it to be somewhat rural or overgrown over here. And then I also want the ability to just make a quick dirty path and cut off access to the residential area. So in case, you know, I need to have people over to sell turnips or whatever. So I think the first step is basically everything that I see on screen right now is going to be changed over. Actually, if I position myself right in front of this fence, I might be able to do sort of like a like a wipe later on. So let's see how much I could get done in the next few hours. Also now, it's exactly noon, so what's the turnip price? 144. Okay, that's slightly above my guaranteed amount. Our minimum is now raised to be guaranteed to be 144. So there is no reason for me to sell right now. We wait for tomorrow morning, got it. So a very big thing of making this area feel overgrown is I want it to feel like the paths are restricted. And what I plan on doing is, so the pathway from there from the airport. So I came down here to the lowest point and I looked to the left at what is visible. And that second rose is visible. So this row right here is gonna be the next path coming up. And I want it to be super subtle and very hard to see, but kinda like you can make it out. So like, see how little of that path you can see? Through several trees, you're not gonna be able to see a lot. And that's kind of the point here. So I'm basically gonna make it so like there's little sectioned off areas like this that I'm not gonna be able to explore whatsoever. But the most important part of this is that nothing else can spawn in here. I'm not gonna have fossils show up in here or anything else. And then also, I'm gonna try to manipulate where my daily rocks can spawn because I'm good. I'm, I have a whole bunch of stone stools, right? I have like so many stone stools. They're so easy to create. Garden rocks are 15 rocks, but stone stools are three rocks or stones, whatever. So I'm basically just going to use these as decoration in here to prevent things from spawning. And I read up a whole thing on Reddit on how you control where your daily rocks spawn. And I'm also gonna do some tree blending. So like if you place down one little piece of sand right there, you could plant a coconut tree and it will kind of blend in with everything else going on. And then just to be extra coy, I'm gonna have different light sources in here. Like this little space, I could put a small light. This little garden lantern behind this tall fence, you're not gonna see it that much and I like that. Can you grow there? I think you can grow there. If not, we can move you. And you know what? As reckless as it seems, this is the first time that I've ever been like, you know what? I want to eat 10 turnips. Oh, ready to move 10 trees. If you didn't know you could do that, you could totally do that. It's my second day in the row of getting a shower. Which I learned that the music for an individual hour can change based on the weather, which is pretty neat. Now all these flowers are watered, saving me so much time. Thanks, game. All right, so here's the entranceway. We got some, oh look, the lanterns light up when it's raining, that's neat. Most of the cedars are just saplings right here, so it's gonna take, you know, three, four days for those to grow up and be big boys. Same thing with the coconut trees. You can see one right there behind the torch. This pathway right here is gonna go up to the residential services area, and then I have a quick little cut through right here, going to, excuse me, Shep going to this uh, five by seven area that I need to expand to out that way. That's gonna be the Nook's Cranny eventually. No matter what, I want the beach to be accessible so like I could come up here toward, you know, where I wanna develop the town and stuff. And then down here, I could always just cut up real quick and then make my way up to the residential services area. I started formatting this left side a little bit. Bo is singing apparently. Here we have one of the houses who is uh, a chicken 
who <laughs> who never did a good job as personal trainer. Yeah, I'm talking about you, not to you. Just keep going, keep going, Goose. And then I planted a whole bunch of just completely random flowers over here, so it really does seem like wildflowers, and I like that feel. Of course, cedar trees are going to be popping up, and it's going to be it's going to be doing great over there. Why is everyone? Oh, they're singing in the rain. I get it. And I feel like this is where I want to start developing like a small town area with my uh, museum and Able Sisters and stuff like that. Of course, we need to figure out what we're doing with all of our flowers over here. The uh, the spiked fences that I was using seem a little, a little aggressive. <laughs> like, actually dangerous. So I actually visited someone on my Discord who was, who they had the country fences available and uh, it just seems so much more friendly. Like, I don't want it to seem scary, the stuff that's over there. I, I want it to be, you know, still friendly and inviting, but just, uh. Oh yeah, this, this was definitely the right move. I've given some thought to my flowers. And while my flowers are beautiful, and I love them, we need to clean up this area a little bit. And I think the first step is taking all these hybrids and moving them to a new location. All right, so coming from our main area here, we're gonna dip down over to the bottom left and right here, I wanna make sort of a picnic area. So I designed threes, these three designs right here that's based off of like a men's flannel design. And it doesn't look that bad using the transparency on the ground. I've always wanted to make a, uh, a little picnic area, but I've only seen it done in like Japanese gardens and stuff. And I'm like, how do we make like a real, masculine American picnic. Boom, flannel. You know, it's right about now that I realize how much more I have to do today and how today was just little progress updates on what's going on here. So I, it was at this time that I, re I realized Friday, I'm not going to be able to finish an episode. Can't, there's no way I'm gonna be able to, to have as much done as I want for one single episode. Let's get away from the waterfall. I guess this is gonna be a mega episode because it's gonna be like two days jam-packed full of me doing stuff. <laughs> so I now just figured out what I'm doing with my flowers. Here's my beautiful house and I'm gonna keep this like this, at least for the, you know, the, the foreseeable future. This is gonna stay like this, right? But I wanna be able to leave here, maybe make this a double staircase because I also plan on removing the entire third floor of my island, but we're gonna talk about that much later. This comes down here and I want to have a pathway that walks straight through but on the left side and the right side are going to be the flower collections. Yeah, I kind of like that. Kind of. I don't know. I might end up making this dirt as well so that it's actually... Yeah, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. And I've decided to move away from doing 3x4 because not everything was having the same potential of spreading. So instead, I've decided to just do simple rows of two, or I guess you'd say columns of two, and however many rows as colors there are. So on the left, where it's going to be an even amount, and there's going to be always uh, six across, is going to be cosmos, pansies, lilies, and windflowers, because those have six different colors. Also up here is going to be mums, which also has six colors. And then once we make our way down here to the hyacinths, those have seven colors. Also tied for seven colors is going to be the tulips. Then lastly, this row right here is going to be the roses, which has a total of eight colors. I think this is definitely a better idea. So every flower has the exact same chance of reproducing. And it is 4.30. Time is literally flying by. Listen, if you have not unlocked terraforming yet, it is the longest thing. The longest, longest thing. I've decided that it's time to lay down my fruit. And honestly, I don't know of any other place. I've determined that there's no reason for me to have a third floor on my island. None whatsoever. It's doing nothing. I might keep up the memory garden in the very top left corner, although I do have inevitable plans for that as well, to make it more of a shrine and less of just of a, hey, here's an area where things are. I swear terraforming is the slowest thing ever in this game, but it's so weird if we leave our house, which is, you know, on this second floor, and then we walk to the left. It's just... It's all just flat over here. 
We have made a plains biome. Well, I want to make a small little area. Basically, we're gonna take our orchard and we're just gonna move our orchard over here. That's all we're gonna do. Deforestization did not affect my star rating, sweet. One of the key things that I wanted to do in order to, you know, sort of future-proof this for rock spawning is rocks can't, sp uh, to that of my knowledge, rocks cannot spawn on hard pathways. They can on, I think, dirt, sand, and dark dirt. Maybe not even sand, I don't know. I want to basically make it so I have a predefined location that all these trees are gonna be. Also, that way I don't have any fossils that are like randomly like popping up in places. I have to tell you today, this has been the best thing ever. I've done this so many times. I've moved 30 trees already. So, <laughs> I realized that I don't have a lot of orange trees. So, I'm just gonna have to shake these boys, collect them, and then plant three new uh, baby oranges. Nothing wrong with that, right? I think the only thing that would make it more complete is having all of the corresponding boxes right underneath, but I really like this orchard up here. So now that my garden area is completely formatted, now it's just a matter of planting everything down, and I decided that I was going to plant from colors outward because there is red of every single flower. So like, there's the red cosmos, and then I'm gonna put down the red pansies, red lilies, windflower, in the other row, mums, hyacinths, tulips, and roses. Now there are white of every flower as well, although I don't have my white cosmos. I have no idea where they are. Honestly, I might have sold them. The next row is where it gets tricky because there's not any other colors that everything has a color of. The next common ones are yellow and orange. Reading your guys' comments, some people said that orange roses from the random islands, like the, the, the rare hybrid flower islands, if you have two orange roses together, they have a chance at making blue roses, which is dope, so I'm gonna consider that sort of a, sort of a Hail Mary play. And there are no orange mums, so my orange mums are going to be green mum, because mums are the only ones that have a green color, so it just kind of works. So first of all, I have to say, I love the way this looks. This looks so nice, and I love it. Secondly, it really makes it easy for me to see exactly what I'm missing. So according to my chart here, I need two black cosmos, two white cosmos, two purple pansies, one orange pansy, one pink lily, no windflowers. The rarest roses, purple, blue, and black. Tulips, I need one orange, one pink, purple, and black. I'm good on hyacinths, and I'm missing the green mums. I'm just gonna move these at the rare chance that that actually does exactly what I want it to, so neat. I cannot tell you guys how many shovels I've gone through doing all... Those are white cosmos. With the flower area all done, I'm now doing the grueling task of anytime that I need to lay down fencing, I need to put my camera up to make sure that it's gonna be in a position that's not already where a tree is. That's not extremely time consuming or anything. I mean, the saplings make my life so much easier to the point that I'm thinking about just getting rid of everything that's not a sapling. As I'm also trying to do a really good job on making sure that Anytime that I place stuff down, I'm keeping in mind the whole, you know, make sure there's not three full blocks of dirt and grass and everything else that can spawn rocks. What I'm doing with this formatting is making sure that I'm gonna be able to control my rock location, and ultimately, I want them all to be in one area. I was just walking along the cliffside here, and uh, these look like purple roses, yeah. Those are purple roses. Wow. Okay, these random seeds on the side of the island gave me the exact thing that I wanted. Good job, white roses. Wow, this is amazing. Oh! Look at this guy! Where you been all day? You washed up next to the Statue of Liberty, and the lighthouse, and Godzilla, and the wave breaker. And you're drunk. And please wake up, because I didn't put my shovel away. Wow, apparently Gulliver only needs one space to spawn. <laughs> Duly noted. Now, I think the hardest part of doing this is actually making sure that I'm on different, I don't know what to call them, chunks, cubes, grids, whatever you want to call them. But you see, grid like, you know, E6, I can only have three rocks in E6, and then I could have three rocks in D6. So it's going to be a matter of making sure that I have just enough spawning space 
in those two half grids. I have gone through my entire island and I am fairly certain there are no three by three spawnable locations anywhere. Oh, except for all over here that I missed. In theory, if I were to make that dirt right there, then tomorrow morning, that will be our first rock location right in the middle of here. I cannot begin to tell you how burnt out I am. I have been playing since like 8 or 9 a.m. Whenever this video started. And I've been going straight. If you look at my mini-map, you can see how detailed I've been in making sure that there was not three spaces that were spawnable for the rocks. Getting ready to go downstairs and relax. And then I remembered I still didn't grab Gulliver's communicator parts. So, uh... He passed out again. I was taking a quick power nap. Yeah, I got him right here, buddy. Yeah, and now you're gonna jam him into your phone, and then you're gonna call for help again, and then tomorrow you're gonna send me something lackluster, isn't that right, buddy? I just noticed that even though he fixes it, his screen is still shattered. Nice. Good morning, everyone. I had some crazy dreams. I had Animal Crossing related dreams, but they weren't scary things like Oh, there's a tarantula running after me. I'm gonna put down this candle over here and it's gonna look really nice. It was, I basically had a dream of me sitting here playing the game. That's how much I played the game yesterday. But at the same time I was like, oh boy, it's morning. I get to play more Animal Crossing and then I look at my clock, it's like, it's 4.45 a.m. I'm like, I didn't even sleep like four hours. Good morning, butter pup. It's Saturday. You know what, if it wasn't for Isabel telling me the day of the week, I don't know if I would know the day of the week. We have a new friend in our island. It's Twiggy. Yay. It's raining again. Any good luck on the gold roses? Ooh. We had another lily of the valley grow. Fantastic. And it looks like my blacks made some reds. Thank you so much, my reds. Did I say that backwards? I think I said that backwards. It looks like these orange and whites have made a red. Is that a red? That's a hybrid red. That's one of the reds that's gonna get me a blue. Okay. Well, buddy, you are gonna go over here. And I have not seen a rock respawn yet, and I have not looked at my little area to the side. What? How did this rock spawn here? That's not a nine block wide thing. I mean, you were so close to where I wanted you to go. Oh, look, that's... Apparently, my glowing spot follows the same rules. Oh boy. Okay. Is it because it's nine this way that it was able to grow? Oh, it's my money rock for the day, too. Ooh, black tulips? I'm, I'm reading over the document again as far as uh, how the spawning works, and nowhere does it say that stones prevent it from spawning, just that they can't spawn on stones, but maybe next to stones was considered open area. But we have to go check out on our turner prices for the day, which should be amazing. KK's here too. My hot item? Trash bags. That's some hot trash. This should be a low of 144 and a high of 190. 181. Tomorrow, my price is not going to be that good. So today is my best day to sell. So after selling all of my turnips for the entire week, we walked away with a profit of 487,000 bells, minus the small amount that I ate. So if I plotted this out right, that means that I can just come here, shop moving kit, let me imagine it. Perfect. So I was tagged in this. Kind of a while ago, uh, <laughs> April 4th, I was tagged in this design right here. Someone by the name of B, you can see the creator code on screen if you'd like. And they sort of made like this custom walkway path that you can place down. So I want to give this a try. You know what? I gotta say, I really like how messy and sort of chaotic that is. Where it's like, here used to be a really nice path and now, now it's that. Know what I mean? I think that's pretty cool. You know, I've downloaded a lot of paths, and I've messed around with a lot of designs. I have never come across one that was easier to use and more fun to use, 
Like, everything just works so perfectly all the time. Yo, shout out to the person who made this. They did a fantastic job. They really did. And just to add, like, another level is, like, I'm gonna take away that piece of fence, throw that down there, and then I'm gonna put the fence back on top. I think that adds a lot to it. I just watched an entire video in Japanese. <laughs> explaining this better. In the video, she just used fences, and honestly, I think fences might be a better idea because I have a lot of leftover fences, and God, I have so much softwood. I could just use the softwood to make... She said 220 fences did it for her, so we can definitely overmake that and then lay down our 2x2 grid of all the fences we need. So in the Japanese YouTube tutorial, they basically said if it's next to a cliff, it won't grow. If it's next to a water, it won't grow. If it's next to uh, a, a river, it won't grow, including diagonally. All you need to do is put down fences to and make two by two walkways. Everywhere needs to be a two by two walkway and then you are good. These are invalidated spaces, but this is not an invalidated space. Putting that there makes all of this an invalidated space. So it looks like we just need to put down a whole bunch of fences and then we should be good? Question mark? <clears throat> okay, spent about an hour placing down fences everywhere to invalidate every single space around a fence, all eight pixels or blocks or whatever you want to call them. So all eight spaces around every single one of these fences is invalidated spawning location, making the only place that this can spawn to be right here. This one space right here. I actually gave this a little bit of thought and while I do really, really like how close they all are, I've decided to spread it out. That way I don't need to uh, hit this one rock, right? And then I need to collect these things and then I can hit this rock. Instead, I want this to be a little bit more spaced out so I can be a little bit more casual about it. A little bit more cash. And I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel like if I were to lie to you, I would be lying to myself. I was so, 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 so tempted on just fast forwarding through time. Or more appropriately, rewinding through time. Like going back to yesterday and then fast forwarding to today. That way I can really test if it was, you know, like if everything was where it's supposed to be. And then I would just destroy all the rocks. But, again, I feel like that'd be lying to not only you, but lying to myself. So I opted against that. I just realized that my character looks like a cop. I did another run to make sure that everything was spawn proof. And I'm pretty sure it is. And now, my biggest challenge, because you could just drop items everywhere, but I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to maintain my 5 star rating. 5 star rating. Beautiful. So all my friends were asking what my big project is and stuff like that, and I was like, I, I kind of told them what my project is, and I said, if you're gonna send me anything, please only make it things that are related to nature. Thanks for the advice for Five Star Island. If you go back in time, what would you tell your high school self? Uh, anytime I'm, I think about a scenario like this, I wouldn't change anything because everything that you've done in your life makes you who you are. A chair for the desk I sent? Thank you. I must ask you a question. How are you? I'm very tired, to be honest. It's pronounced Neko. Nekomada. Oh, okay. Sorry, Neko. This is for the most epic gamer. A uh, Kakako tree. Don't know what that is. Please enjoy the gift. Hope it lights your way. Thanks, Moon Spider. Please handle with care. All right. Nature vibing. Love the videos, bro. Definitely need it at a time like this. Oh, thank you. Thank you for all the videos keeping us sane. Here's something that clearly exists in every natural environment. Bamboo speakers? Thank you, Leo. P.S. They love Rodney. Uh, well, hopefully you get Rodney. I didn't want him. Tell Rodney this is how he makes me feel. Gone but not forgotten. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. A purple hyacinth wreath. Thank you, Sarah. I like so much your videos, so this is a gift for all those wasps that bothered you. Thanks, Nike. For a new museum display? Not much, but hope it helps. With these big changes coming to your island, make sure your ducks are in a row. Good luck with Tinder. With this, you'll be sure to find a catch. I'm afraid to find out what this is. I hope you like it on paths. Rodney told me to send you this. Thank you to everyone who sent things in. I already have the Mahjong Arcade. 
I got it yesterday, and I already have the Galaga arcade, and I already have the dartboard. Uh, I think it's even on display down there. Apparently, there's a whole series of different gumball machines in different colors. Someone sent me a pyramid. I don't know what I'm going to do with a pyramid. I already have the black Godzilla. Also, my native one is black, but this is good, so maybe I could trade it later. Bernie keeps sending me fossils. Someone sent me a scorpion model, which is pretty dope because, you know, we can't have scorpions yet. Another system kitchen, which is great. I can't find it. Wait to find the additional pieces of the system kitchen. We have this. The parasol is dope. What is this? I don't know what that is, but it's really awesome looking. More garbage cans. Uh, <laughs> is it sad to say that the thing I'm most happy about is this one log? I've seen this log. And I thought it would be nature for perfect for nature stuff, but I didn't know how to get that log. Also, I love this duck. I got sent gamer chairs, which is amazing. The bamboo speaker is also so dope. I think Limburg is eventually going to give me the DIY for that. This is a new kind of plant that kind of looks like, I don't know, a cocoa bean tree. And this wasp head model on the wall is what nine bears are made out of. So great. I really like this thing. I don't even know what this is. What is this? A Zen Styles stone. That's really awesome. Obviously I can't do anything with one speaker because, you know, stereo. So the thing is called a wild log bench. And obviously I don't have the DIY for it, but I would like the DIY for it. So it's just a matter of time till I get that. So now I'm just going to be doing a lot more of the exact same thing that I was doing yesterday, laying out every single micro environment nature wise. My whole thing is like, I'm going to have all these garden lanterns and bamboo lamps and stuff and just uh, being able to mix everything else in. It's going to be really, really awesome. I think one of my biggest concerns is the nooks cranny moving from there to over here tomorrow and the order of the world generation. So like, will a rock generate before that building is moved? I have no idea. Yeah, I definitely liked, like this being wide a lot more. This is so much better. But now I need to invert where the stone is and where the dirt is, that way they they spawn in the proper locations. So now that I've understand these rock spawning mechanics a little bit better, I think I'm going to be able to position all of my flowers. That way they're going to be able to breed. And then also I thought it'd be really nice because I have this area right here. That's essentially this lower path coming up. This path over here from the left coming right from the resident services, sort of doing a U shape coming up to here. We have the rocks over here. We have this area down here, which is going to be mainly flower breeding and then I wanted to curve up this way and this is going to get to our you know actually formatted area so we're going to have a nice transitional period between doing the crazy you know super jungly paths and the cleaner a little bit more formatted stuff whenever I'm working with these paths it's always a lot easier for me to lay down everything that I want with just middle pieces and then once I have the middle pieces figured out, I could take it from there. All right, so check it out. What I'm thinking now is, considering where these fences are located, everywhere around the fences, including diagonal, such as right here, everywhere that's grass inside of here is considered a non-spawnable location. Ignore that one rose for now. Everywhere that is this dark dirt is a spawnable location. And everywhere that these red and yellow mums are and these red cosmos are... Wait, am I breeding for red cosmos? However, these two spaces are places that rocks can spawn. So all you need to do is cover up these two exact spaces. I don't know if I'm explaining this well. In my head, it makes sense. And once I really figure it out, right now I'm just hypothesizing. Take what I'm saying with a grain of salt that this is what I think will work, but I'm not 100% yet. Essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these random jubilees of flowers down here and I'm going to organize it into little gardens like this. So that way it's not, you know, a horrible spawnable mess. Like, like, look at those roses. All right, just checking in with you guys real quick because it's been a while since I gave you a little update on anything. So I've taken all of my white flowers and all of my orange flowers, uh, when flowers, I mean roses, and I put them in this 
two wide grid here with one grass space on the outside surrounded by fences. I do have this one stone piece here because it's not touching any fences, even diagonally. This is gonna be my area that these whites are trying to make a purple. And if there's a chance that those two oranges next to each other may make a red, and there's a chance that those two oranges next to each other may just make a blue, and then we'll be done. The whites make a purple, then they move up here and go in between the yellows. And then we're hoping for a white, and then we get advanced whites. Meanwhile, some white and oranges have already bred together to give us hybrid reds, which are over here at the top left. And when these grow up, these may just make us a blue and we'll be done. And that would be great. And then I could clean up all of this area here. Now there are some flowers that I only have one of, and it's been researched that there is a cloning mechanic, that if a flower is not next to any other flower, that it has a chance to just clone itself, be the exact same genetics. And uh, after I have one of each, then I'm gonna worry about filling in the rest. But like, I have one black tulip, I'm not worrying about making a second black tulip. Same thing goes for the pink and the orange, because I could always just clone them later. And now it's just gonna be a matter of blending these two different path types together, and then making these stones seem much less square and formatted and much more unruly. Oh, I forgot about these. So now that I've done path blending going from the dirt to the the hybrid pattern or the, the custom DIY pattern, I extended it a little bit further and I have to say I really, really love it to the point that now I'm thinking about incorporating it everywhere because just this regular dirt path seems pretty meh. Pretty meh overall. I mean, like, I, I don't know. You look at this and it's like, whoa, there's detail, there's structure, there's so much life to it. The whites and the grays mixing with the green. This this has quickly become my favorite new pattern of the game. But like, ah, oh, I think it's so, so beautiful. And on top of that, I'm hiding rock spawnable locations. <laughs> that's, that's what I think the most amazing part of all that is. We have done so much in the last 30-ish hours. And I just want to give you guys a quick little recap of everything. As soon as you walk in, once these trees are grown up, they're going to be overgrowing and they're going to be covering this whole area. So it's going to be dark and it's going to be intimate when you walk through. We have a quick little cut through here for Nook's Cranny, which we now have with the mixed floor pattern. We have random flowers here and there. The trees, they're slowly, slowly growing and they're going to be beautiful once they're big. Uh, buildings now have their own garbage cans, which they supposed to have. I may end up doing something for the sort of difficult to see areas like I know to walk this way, but maybe not someone else. And then as you come through, you have this nice little clear up pattern. We also have this wrapping all the way back to resident services right here. So in case I just want to go right and not have to deal with, you know, walking by the nook's cranny, we have this beautiful Zen stone thing up here. Right here we have our now reformatted area for all of our stones to spawn in, all six stones. I destroyed the one stone that spawned in today. We've pretty much spawn proofed the entire island. Everything is within one block of a fence or a cliff top or a water source or a whole bunch of other things. We have these flowers down here ready to breed and if it's not within one space then we covered it in stone so nothing can spawn there. Lots of pathways of two everywhere, that way, once again, everything is spawn-proof. All of our roses area ready to breed, ready to crossbreed, and ready to repopulate, because we're almost there for the blue rose, which is the, the most recessive rose in the game. So once we have that, everything is going to be easy. This area right here, this little strip of land going through, I think this is going to be the museum and maybe one or two villagers or maybe I'll end up putting the museum and the able sisters here and this is going to be sort of like a, a small town area but it's going to be not as unruly as this area is going to be and you know what I think it's very appropriate that we end today's episode with going and saying hey to our newest villager right here it's Twiggy's house I, I'm now told it's my fourth bird because in addition to my penguin and my rooster, I also forgot that I have a peacock slash ostrich. So this is now my fourth bird. I should probably do something about that. 
Thanks for hanging at the campsite, but now I gotta unpack. Please, this is amazing. Listen here, Twiggy. We thank you for your service. You have prevented the evil Rodney from continuing. Oh, I love this wall. It's like a white version of the sort of goldish one that I have. Ah, Twiggy, you got style, girl. So tonight I'm gonna continue working on my pathways, on my foresting, start working on the new museum area where it's going to end up being. I've been an active island resident for 30 days, but Nook's Cranny didn't open up on the first day. So I think it's still gonna be like three days or so past here. We'll see how that works out. Well guys, with that, I wanna thank you for checking out this mega episode of Animal Crossing New Horizon. It's been a blast having you. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you want more content in your inbox, be sure to hit the subscribe button, even though that does nothing for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, Austin John out.